Welcome back, everybody. This is J.R. Platter, and you're watching The Secrets of Leadership Coaching. Our distinguished guest this week is Ms. Susan Spears, who's the president and CEO of the Fredericksburg Area Chamber of Commerce, amongst many other accolades. Uh, but I'll let you talk about yourself, Susan. Tell our, our viewers and readers about yourself. Okay, thanks, Jr. I'm happy to be here with you today to talk about coaching. Um, I, as you mentioned, I am president and CEO of our regional chamber of commerce, um, an organization of which you are a former chairman of the board, and we thank you for your service. Um, in that capacity, I'm also the executive director of our Leadership Fredericksburg program. We're going into our 15th year with wow. Leadership Fredericksburg this year. And you, my friend, have been involved with the program since uh, 2012, when you were actually a student in the program, even though you had a PhD in leadership, it was awesome. And you've been involved ever since to include now being the lead, one of the lead faculty members of the program. So that is the joyous part of my job. Um, absolutely love it. But really, you know, that's the job. Um, who am I? I am also Richard Spears' wife for 28 years. Not sure how that happened, but it has been 28 years, um, which is exciting. Um, we are Black Labrador parents, so we have two dogs. One's, one's um, a rescue dog, and so that has been um, a real learning experience for us in this life. Um, also, I was a music major in college. I went to Virginia Commonwealth University. Thought I was going to be the next Mick Jagger, but we're, we're, you know, life takes you down different roads, and today I am a leader of a nonprofit business association. Amazing. So where does coaching fit into all that? It sounds like a pretty busy life. Yeah, well, it's, you know, when I talked about um, leading the chamber and also doing leadership Fredericksburg through the chamber, uh, that's my sweet spot with what I do. There's, there's a whole lot involved with running a business association. The part that I personally enjoy the most has always been working with the leadership program. And one of the components to that has been executive coaching, which I've been doing since the second year. Um, it, it's a joy to do that, uh, to dive in and have your toe in that water. And that's how coaching has, has fit in for me. Mm -hmm. And so you, you do a 360 assessment with the leaders that are in your cohort? Yes, we do a 360 about halfway through the program. So. Folks self-rate themselves, and then they get a, a group of peers. Uh, they have a supervisor. They have folks that report to them and external or internal clients. They, they have all of those people rate them. And then they sit down for a coaching session, which often we hear is the most powerful time for them in our program. It's one-on-one -on -one where we, the faculty members, are assigned to one of the fellows. And we take that time with them to walk through their pretty extensive report and uh, work on a development plan, an individual development plan as they want to grow their leadership. Mm -hmm. So I was just uh, had a conversation with another leadership development professional and uh, he doesn't think a lot of 360s. You know, he actually scoffs at the idea. So talk to me a, a little bit about your experience of the value of that tool. Well, the, the value is, you know, it's, it's really scary. Um, a big component of developing and growing and stretching yourself as a leader is being uncomfortable. And so allowing yourself to let other people take a, a, a survey and say how they see you is a very vulnerable thing for a leader to do. And, and it can be very humbling, very eye-opening. When we take a self-assessment, it doesn't pick up blind spots you know but blind spots show up when you have mm -hmm. people and even if you pick all the people you like oh they're going to say nice things about mm -hmm. me I just know they will you, you have that fear of asking someone who you're not sure of there's still going to be things that come out there um, and they can be very good things that you hadn't realized in yourself they they could be areas of improvement but that's the the, the key there is to say um, here um, person in my life I am giving you permission to give me some feedback. It's, it's not gonna tell me it was you specifically, but give me the feedback. And I, I, I need this feedback so that I can grow. 
So your program's nine months long, um, a full day a month. But I think it's the third Friday every month for nine months. Yep, se September through May. Okay. Uh, where does the 360 fit into that entire continuum of learning? Is it central to it? Is it tangential to it? I think it's it's one of the top components. Every year we survey our, our participants at the end of the year, and that's always right at the top. Um, we'll say anything you want to keep, what should we get rid of, you know, for future classes. And, and nobody says, um, well, if they do say it, they don't put it in the survey. Uh, get rid of that 360. Uh, they, they really say it's, it's in many cases, um, life-changing for them. I um, was at a chamber event a week or so ago, and um, an individual that had been in our class in 2017 was there and walked right up to me talking about their LMAP experience mm -hmm. and how it's still shaping how they lead mm -hmm. today. I mean, it, it just, it can make such a difference. So if it's that important, why is it in the middle of your program? Well, early on, when we started Leadership Fredericksburg, we did this test at the beginning. We did it before the first day. So strangers, perfect strangers, would walk into a conference room and sit down with us. And Leadership Fredericksburg is a community and business leaders. So it's, it's all different levels of leaders. It's not only top, you know, CEO, manager, whatever. It's somebody who's demonstrated leadership. And sometimes that was an overwhelming thing for someone to do before they'd kind of warmed up to the program. Uh, it was just an unknown entity. It was uncomfortable. They didn't know us yet. They didn't trust us yet. They didn't know why they're their employer was asking them to do this. And so we found that um, it, it, it was still a very positive piece, but we thought, I think we can do it better. So when we moved it to later in the program, they had months to develop and, and have a conversation about leadership um, in a nice, safe group setting, and then get to know us as well, the, the faculty, before they sat down with us. They were, they were far more open to the conversation. Great, right, that's great insight, thank you. So you're a certified coach, certified leadership coach. Um, did you find that a worthwhile experience and for the investment in time and energy? Yeah, so you mentioned it to me last October um, and, and that would have been, because this will be aired and, and so forth. So that was October of 2020. So there we were in this pandemic time and um, it was, a, it was a, a comment you made to me of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm putting together this cohort and you kind of dropped a couple seeds there. And almost like, are, are you listening, Susan? I, I'm, I'm not sure what your magic was there. It was a busy day, a lot was going on. It was towards the end of the day, you just kind of mentioned it. And, and that's the thing, if there's, if, if there's a sliver of opportunity towards your own advancement, take it. This was always an area I enjoyed and wanted to get better at. And I, I discovered, I told you quickly when we started, we were a couple of weeks into, what was it, 15 weeks, I think? Mm -hmm. And it was five days a week. And um, praise God, it was during this pandemic time. So I could put that into my calendar with very few makeups needed, you know, um, and it, it was just incredible, an incredible experience. Um, and I told you a couple weeks into it, that it was just like, aha, right away for me. Um, the simplicity of, of putting your mind around more active listening and asking the questions, taking your curiosity out of here to there, even in your everyday interactions with your teams, I think was really the missing piece in my overall personal leadership toolbox. It's, mm. it's been tremendous. And then that, that cohort um, working with 2RL um, through Flatter, that's just been amazing. I'm now in the second one um, with you. And that for somebody that lives in Virginia has not left the United States yet physically in my mm. lifetime. Um, 
knows my surroundings very well, but suddenly I was in this cohort with people from around the world and particularly um, you matched me with um, Kylie Dare in Australia, which was my partner on a lot of practice coaching for those 15 weeks it was just an amazing experience. Yeah. Well, that's great insight because a lot of our listeners are going to ask themselves, do I want to get certified to be a coach? because I'm a leader of an organization, but you're telling me that even if you don't want to be a coach outside of your job, um, it's just a great addition to your leadership toolkit, that, that set of tools. It, it absolutely is. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I, I can't tell you how it's just shifted my thinking. Mm -hmm. And um, even, even with, with Leadership Fredericksburg, um, JR, when I did the executive coaching, this year, and we were in the process with um, the coaching cohort, I looked at it differently than I had for 13 years prior. You know, I, I had a different level of understanding and curiosity with working with each individual. So we've aligned ourselves to the International Coaching Federation. That's the framework we teach. Um, are you seeking a certification? And would you advise someone to seek a certification? Absolutely. Um, I, I will be seeking it because I'm, I'm always seeking the next step and, and growing and pushing and stretching and, and, and being able to have the, that certification just makes all the difference in, um, in your abilities because it, it requires a lot of hours of practice before you can even apply for it. So it's not like a test you can just study for and go take it. You have to mm -hmm. really put in the time. And so you already have experience when you're getting there, you know? So okay. yeah, I like the challenge of it and I think people should definitely go for it. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So one of the requirements of being a distinguished guest on the secrets of leadership coaching, you gotta tell us one of your secrets. So what, oh, what secret, secret do you have for us? <laughs> okay. Um, I, excuse me again, I would say the secret is be really focused, hmm. be prepared, uh, see the sign behind, wait, where is it? I'm Do, your job. Do your job. <laughs> so your job as a coach is to be prepared, focus, to be an active listener. It's easy to say that it's harder to do it. Your mind will automatically go to other things. So be really present with that person. It's all about them. And so for me, it's taking a little bit of time before each session, making sure I've reviewed everything. Even if it's my first time with someone, I've reviewed everything leading up to that. If it's a continuous relationship, I've gone back and taken a few minutes to review where we were last in our last meeting. I'm prepared, I'm focused on them, and I'm open open to the fact that they may shift. It may be something different that they need in this session than the last time we met. And so I'm there for them. I'm there for them to help them explore what whatever is on their mind. I think Focus. it's funny because in our short time together, I think you've mentioned all eight of the ICF core competencies. So you, you passed the, the pop <laughs> quiz. <laughs> Thank you. So the last thing, yeah, good job. Uh, the last thing I'll ask is two or three names of people you think would be valuable guests to our listeners. Okay, yeah, well, that's that's cool. Um, first, I'm going to go back in time, and I'm going to recommend Greg Hebert. Greg Hebert is an executive coach with a company called Leadership Forward, uh, based in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. You know him, I know him. Um, he is who taught me many things because um, he started Leadership Fredericksburg um, as our consultant. And he is just an exceptional uh, coach and leader. Um, second, I'm going to recommend Dr. David Quarterman. <laughs> the Jedi. The Jedi. <laughs> His company is Academy Leadership Associates, as you well know. Um, Dave Porterman is our partner and lead um, faculty member with Leadership Fredericksburg. He is a gem. Talk about a humble leader, an amazing human being, and, and embodies everything, all the coaching principles, and would be an outstanding guest on, on this program. Third, I will recommend the coach who coached me, 
and 2018, Barbara Gustafson. Her company is called Discover Next Step. She, uh, like Dave Quarterman, is located here in the Fredericksburg region. And uh, she has coached for years and worked with people all around the world on different projects. She's, she's an exceptional leader as well. So I recommend those three to you, JR. Wow, three great names. Uh, we'll certainly reach out to all three of them and we'll let them know that you recommended them. Okay. All right, well, thanks for your time. Uh, very valuable insights. And I'm gonna let you get back to your day job. All right, good to see you, JR. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.